Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today we are going to be talking about cleanup crew isopods. So I thought I'd start out with this species. They're so tiny they're a little bit hard to see here, but I'll see if I can get some into the camera. They typically play dead, but I can see some of them starting to crawl around already. Probably needs to be a little bit damper in here, to be honest needs to be watered but there's a whole bunch of them in there they're just kind of small and a little bit difficult to see but you can see them starting to crawl around so hello Newt Scamander and prehistoric Matt our first two commenters hey there's some doing their thing Trichorhinotomentosa the dwarf or micro white isopods Ken Malinsky hello so this is one of the first species ever kept in bioactive setups, as far as I've been able to determine. When I started keeping isopods, there were really only a couple of species that were commonly kept in bioactive setups, and this was one of them. Bruno, hello. Wally of Supreme Gecko and Damien, hey, welcome all. So if I dig around a little bit, I'm sure I can unearth quite a few of these guys. Well, I should say gals because they're parthenogenic, so they're all female. But these are undeniably one of the most popular cleanup crew isopods, and with good reason. And prehistoric mat. Isopods the only thing you have, just from outside popped them in. Cool. Well, it's not a great shot of them. Let's see if I can Dig around a little bit and find an accumulation of them. I guess it's been a few days since I fed them, so they're kind of spread around. But there's a bunch in there. So, uh, let's take a look. Oh, awesome. Glad to hear you Cubaris Red Tigers are doing well. Damien. And Gretel, I just started. And LMT. Well, isopods tend to be kind of expensive, and I think there are a couple of things at play there. And one of them, I'm going to open up these other isopods uh, here. These are another one that uh, very popular as a bioactive cleanup crew when the hobby was first starting. When dart frogs were really the uh, creatures that got people started with the bioactive setups with isopods. So we'll, we'll answer this question um, in just a second here. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on these guys a little bit. Well, that's, that's a little better. We get some better isopods. So um, it just depends. LMT, um, part of it is that they don't reproduce as fast as things like fruit flies or springtails. And so it, it takes a while to produce them. So that's going to affect the market to some degree. And then uh, another thing is that uh, a lot of them are just, it's demand. Uh, things like, especially the Cubaris or other more expensive isopods. So there you go. I think it's worth paying that much if, if that's what you want. I mean, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. But, uh, oh, there's a white one in there. But this, of course, was once known as the Spanish orange and is now just more often called the, uh, or the giant orange, more often called Porcelio Scaber Orange. Um, and okay, springtails are better cleanup crews. It depends on what you're looking for. I would agree that springtails are important as a cleanup crew, but I would, I would say that uh, the best cleanup crew is composed of more than one species, isopods and springtails together. Um, oh, just got in from an hour's worth of isopede and millipede hunting. Awesome. So the first bioactive enclosures, it's hard to say when they started because there were probably, you know, some bioactive things going on in greenhouses and so on, you know, centuries ago, like you're saying. But bioactive as we know them today, meaning I'll define them as uh, essentially a glass box or an acrylic box or whatever with artificial lighting that is kept indoors and is used to keep reptiles, amphibians, or invertebrates in which a cleanup crew is deliberately introduced and in in where the substrate can allow the uh, 
thriving of both microfauna and live plants, that's, um, that's what I would say. Um, that kind of bioactive enclosure hasn't been going on for nearly as long because they just haven't had uh, the technology to do all that or the availability. So, And what is the best way to get them to breed? Well, it depends on the isopod, but I just think if you provide them with a good environment, they'll breed like crazy. They need a good, rich substrate with rotting wood and with um, decaying hardwood leaves. They need a damp side and a dry side, and they need some supplemental foods, boost things like protein, fish food, that kind of thing, and they need enough calcium. That'll get them going. And Wally, um, what am I feeding the dwarf whites? Everything. Uh, I feed them fish pellets. I feed them. Lately, I've been experimenting with feed them mostly snake, snake feces, my corn snake feces, and seeing how that goes. For the, so the past couple of months, that's all I've been feeding them almost. I mean, my daughter's been throwing other things in there too because she helps me feed them. But uh, I'm just kind of seeing how that works. And LMT, I agree. And these guys are hungry, I can tell, because this one's trying to nibble on me. Um, demonstrating that they indeed. Uh, are pretty good about eating things that need to be eaten. I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, today's dinner in there. Green beans. French cut green beans with no salt. They seem to uh, get a kick out of it. Um, not high in protein, but they were, they're still a favored food. So welcome back, Cody. What are a good cleanup crew for a Costa Rican montane enclosure? I have a black milk snake and a big IRIS plastic tub that I'm thinking of turning bioactive. Well, since uh, black milk snakes don't really like super high temperatures, and they do like, um, tell me a little bit more about the humidity because I've been researching black milk snakes a little bit. I'm assuming that like most snakes, they don't want to be on wet substrate because that would be damaging for their skin. Uh, but at cooler temperatures, you wouldn't necessarily want a tropical isopod in there. Um, hmm, that's a good question. You'd probably do well with Porcelio prenosis if it's not too humid because they're going to get uh, a decent amount of uh, ventilation in the setup, I'm sure. Yeah, PUP 314, a good, good point. We're going to need all of those. And thank you, Wally. We got some more likes going on. And thank you, Gretel. The Kaijusio channel. Oh, that's true. You can catch them more easily sometimes. Okay. So they can handle some fluctuation in humidity. I'd probably go with uh, Porcelio Prenosis then. And speaking of Porcelio Prenosis, maybe we should take some of those out and look at some of them. 75 to 83. Uh, okay, yeah, Porcelli don't need this prenosis. Powder blue, powder orange, powder white, something like that. And Jordan, welcome, Jordan Safala. I'm gonna switch out these isopods for some more um, that are good cleanup crew isopods, I think, anyway. Um, those are two, those, I started out with those because they are the, uh, you know, the historically the first cleanup crew isopods really that ever were kept. And which ones are these? I think these are just my, these are my powder oranges. Yep, I've got, these are doing well. Got plenty of these guys. Of course, these don't, um, don't fail to do well. It's hard to fail with these guys. So I love the powder oranges. I posted some of these on my Instagram account earlier today. That there were a bunch of monkey all together. You couldn't tell what species they were because they hadn't oranged up yet but there are so many in here, I can't even, you know, they're just all over the whole place, but this is how they work. And I love them as cleanup crews because they're so adaptable. They breed so fast. They're small enough that a lot of larger creatures are not necessarily interested in eating them. They're fast enough that they can get away. At least some of them can get away from even the smaller things that do eat them. And they breed so fast that, uh, you know, they can make up for that. The only thing I really have had issues with these guys in, well, I use these in my leopard gecko vivariums. You know, they, they do well in an arid setup as long as they have the moist hide. But uh, the thing that I like about them 
The, the only area I've had problems with them is if the enclosure it doesn't have enough ventilation, they don't do as well in low ventilation setups, at least with dart frogs and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, but I do love them. Let's look at a couple more as I answer questions. I have three different strains of these, so we might as well look at all of them, huh? Here's the original strain. This is just the powder blue, the wild type. I like these a lot too. Actually a pretty cool color, even though blue is sort of a stretch. They are pretty cool isopod. Anyway, they just kind of have a slate bluey sort of color to them. Um, so Damien, I do have some isopods that I picked up out of this enclosure. Um, I posted on my Patreon page uh, the other day a couple of close-ups of these guys and I've posted one I think on my Instagram. I'm getting a strain that looks a lot like Oreo Crumble and it may or may not be the same mutation. But if it is, awesome. If it's not, also awesome because I'll be happy to have it either way. If I can get a new strain that's a little different from Oreo Crumble into the hobby, great. And if I'm just getting Oreo Crumbles for free because they showed up in my normal tub, also great. So um, this is another great species and I keep finding uh, the unusual ones in this tub. I pulled a bunch out the other day, like three or four of them. I guess that's not a bunch. So in a sense, I may or may not have Oreo Crumble, I guess, to, to uh, try to answer your question. It's sort of an ambiguous answer, but I do have something that looks a lot like it and they're actually in my Isoviva enclosure. So maybe we can pull that out and look at it in a minute. Um, I would like to get out my, where are they? Hold on a second while I search them out. I think these are it. These are my whiteouts. It's the same species, but they are white. Let's take a peek. These are the Porcelione de Spurinosa's whiteout. Pretty cool. They've been doing pretty well too. And Wally, um, to answer your question, I will be setting up the garter snakes in a bioactive setup. I actually plan on doing that today, filming that for my next video. So this is my newest group of um, Porcelione de Spurinosa's, if you don't count the possible Oreo crumbles that showed up more recently. But this, these, I bought these from the isopod chick. The, an original group a while ago and they're they're going nuts in here they're doing their thing so there's plenty in here um, there's a lot of little ice pods in there even though it hasn't been all that long since I got them so all in all if people ask me what kind of isopod I suggest for a cleanup crew if the container is reasonably uh, ventilated this is kind of my go-to species and the color doesn't matter you know, uh, oh, I see somebody that doesn't belong in there. Got to get that out. That doesn't even look like the same species. I think that is a another species of isopod in there, but yep, it is. I'm going to fish that out. We'll talk about that species in a minute. That's fun. Okay. Let them go do their thing. Um, I would like to actually grab that species. Right now, while we're talking about it, if I can find it, just one moment here. I think I have discovered it. Yep. Here we go. This species is Silisticus convexus. Pretty much bulletproof species. They breed fast. They're good at hiding. They can tolerate low uh, fairly low humidity, fairly high humidity, um, but I, I think these are probably one of the most underrated cleanup crew isopods around. They're, they're pretty, pretty useful. They don't get gigantic. Oh, there's somebody, a stowaway in there. It happens more often than you might suspect. I'm going to pop that into the Dalmatian enclosure over here. There we go. And let's see if we can get a closer look at some of these Silisticus convexus. These are cool because when they roll up, they don't make a perfect ball. They make sort of a teardrop shape, which is pretty cool. And I love that unlike most armadillidium, they need uh, more, they don't need a lot of ventilation. 
So, so pet paradise. Yes, well, you could do that. If you want to do that research project, you want to interview me, we could set it up. Are you following me on Instagram already? If not, um, let's do it. Uh, Aquarium X Pets, find me on Instagram and we'll get it set up. So, and Kai Juicio channel just had a bunch of zebra isopods give birth and the powder blue dropped some babies. Awesome. And thank you, Fabio. I've got about 30 something types of isopods. Not all of those are species, some of those are morphs, but if you were going to get some new isopods in a cold area like Washington, where would you get them and what species would you get? I'd probably get Porcelio labus because they seem fine at cooler temperatures. So if your house is in the 60s or something like that, they don't care. They'll be fine. Totally fine. And hello, infamous hip hop. And so LMT or Tegu is in bioactive. What can coexist with him in terms of a cleanup crew or in terms of something else? KK Crazy Exotics. Hello and thank you. I'm glad you are enjoying the videos. And Fabio, oh, you don't have exotic pet shops in Paraguay. So, eh, that does make it a little hard. I don't know exactly what you can collect there. Pet Paradise, how am I doing getting the permits? Well, let me grab some more isopods and uh, we will talk about that. Okay. All right. I love this morph. This is, of course, Porcelio Scaber, just like the... Spanish orange that I showed, but this is the morph mix or the party mix, often called that, because this has normals. It has calicos, it has Dalmatians, it has oranges, and it has orange Dalmatians. I think it has some calico Dalmatians and some calico oranges. It's got all kinds of crazy stuff going on in here. Looks like it needs some new leaves in here. Um, my daughter throws new leaves in every week, and then of course I redo the containers when I can. See, there's a, a nice uh, orange Dalmatian there. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Um, so permit-wise, I have currently permits to ship to 17 states, um, but I can't ship all the species that I have, and some of the states are very restricted. It turns out that Louisiana and Florida are the most restrictive states. And I cannot ship, for example, I don't want to mess it up, but I think to Florida I can't ship Armadillidium klugai is one of the species I can't ship. And I believe Armadillidium maculatum I can't ship there either. And I can't ship Porcelia lavis to Florida. So that's kind of frustrating. But I've got to, you know, follow the how the permits go. And I'm waiting on word about the other, the rest of the states but it's coming along. So Porcelio Expansis is not one I have, although I do have a permit to keep it. So I'm hoping to get some of those at some point because they are included on my permit. Um, there are several species and morphs that I don't have yet that are on my permit. And so I would like to add Porcelio Expansis. Would I support a species Tarragona be a good cleanup clue for tarantulas or are they risky like Piscaber? I don't think they're particularly risky. I keep them with my dart frogs. Let's, let's pull some of those out. I've got some of those right around here somewhere. This is my colony of Tarragona. Yeah, and I, I like these because they stay small and they do a good job cleaning up and they seem to survive with the frogs. Looks like it needs some more moisture in here, but you can see some of them there. Um, let me, I'm going to get my the top of the water on here and Looks like I need to add some sphagnum moss to this setup, and they've eaten a lot of their leaves, too. So, there we go. But now that at least they have a damp area, it's getting a little dry in there. It's not too bad. I mean, they're fine. They do play dead. But um, Isopotus species tarragona, I never had problems with them and with my dart frogs. So I think they're fairly non-risky species, in my personal opinion. What do I feed them? I feed them all sorts of things. I feed them Rapashi Bug Burger and Rapashi Morning Wood. I feed them Supreme uh, Isopod Chow, that uh, Wally of Supreme Gecko sells. I've got um, fish food. I give them Omega-1 Goldfish pellets as a staple food. Oh, that one has a cool pattern on it. Now that's interesting. I like that. Um, I feed them bits of fruits and vegetables. Um, 
mostly vegetables, I guess, more than fruits, but I do feed them fruit once in a while, like uh, mango and apples and things like that. A lot of sweet potato is one of the ones that I use a lot. Uh, sweet potato seems to be a big favorite. Carrots are a big favorite. There are lots that I use though. Let's take a look at this one over here. We've got, this is uh, Trichoniscidae, the dwarf purples, which are still not described very well as far as I know. Let's see, okay. Well, if you don't have, well, there's a bunch of them crawling around there. You can see them doing their thing. They're so tiny though, they're hard to see. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so Ellen T says in terms of anything. Well, I wouldn't put any macro fauna, so I wouldn't put any more reptiles in with your tegu, but uh, isopod wise, you have a lot of options. Um, I might try something like uh, giant canyons in there if you don't have any of those in there. That might be a good one. And house one. Hey Russ, could you tell us about armadillidium klugai ventilation and moisture levels and diet? There go the um, trichoniscidae. They're taking off. There's really a lot of them, but they're just so tiny. They're hard, hard to see. You need some more water in there, definitely. Got a little dry. I'm training my... Uh, my daughters to help me take care of my isopods and they're doing a good job once in a while. I think they, they miss a tub here and there. Okay, so let, let me pull out some clue guy just for a minute because I'm actually going to tell you something that I'm going to try out. I know this sounds a little weird, but I am thinking seriously of trying out clue guy in my garter snake enclosure as a cleanup crew and I'll explain my rationale for that in just a minute. Okay. So Klugai, in terms of ventilation, they need good ventilation. They, they want a decent amount of airflow. Moisture levels, oh, this is the wrong side. They hate this side. They love this side, just a second. This is where they all like to hang out, my Klugai. You can see there's, they're all taken off down there, but there's a bunch of them here. Um, this is the moist side, but I don't get the moisture too much under the container they like to hang out under, or the piece of cork bark they like to hang out under. I just kind of wet here you see there's a little bit moss there just kind of wet it right along the edges there and they love that um, they've been doing really well for me with that they like a lot of ventilation they do like a moist spot but they like the rest of the enclosure pretty dry and um, diet they seem to like fishy things like fish food uh, they like the supreme uh, gecko or the supreme isopod chow too they will eat the bug burger but i don't think they're huge fans of the bug burger they do like the, the fish food a lot though. So Alex Contreras, do you know if magnolia leaves are non-toxic to millipedes? My ivories love magnolia leaves, which I found when stiff and unmoving unless she's molting. Magnolia leaves seem to be a natural part of the diet for isopods and millipedes and are not toxic as far as I know to them. I've fed a lot of both uh, isopods and millipedes, plenty of magnolia leaves. I don't think that's an issue. So it must be something else uh, that's going on with your millipede or, I mean, toxins can be on the leaves, it can be present on the leaves, but not because of the leaves themselves. Brubby TV, been a long time, good to see you. And unknowingly, what's your favorite isopod? Uh, hard to say, but I really love Porcelia Levis Dairy Cow. Porcelia Levis Zebra, or I mean, Porcelia Levis Dairy Cow and Armadillidium Maculatum Zebra are some of my favorites. And Infamous Hip Hop. My rubber duckies, I still have some, but I haven't seen any babies yet. I just redid their enclosure because powder blues were still in there, even though I had separated them from the powder blues as far as I know. I redid the enclosure to try to get rid of all the powder blues. There were still some in there, so I just redid it. Um, so Fabio, I do have some uh, arachnids. I have a tailless whip scorpion. I've got a vinegaroon. I've got a jumping spider. I've got a scorpion. Uh, Asian forest scorpion, so I do have some arachnids. Uh, I don't have any tarantulas though. And good, I'm glad that helps, house one. Hello, Blue Basin Aquatics. So I wanted to tell you about my clue guy. I'm gonna try these in my garter snake enclosure as a cleanup crew for a couple of reasons. One is because they like it warm and there's gonna be a basking spot in there. They like it pretty dry. There's gonna be plenty of gradient. It's gonna be a moist hide for the garter snakes where they can go hang out. There's going to be plenty of dry areas they can hang out. It's a 40 gallon breeder tank. So if it works, I'm gonna have a ton of armadillidium 
clue guy, Montenegro. So I'm going to try it. We'll see how it goes. If it goes well, great. If it doesn't, well, I've learned something. But I think it's a fairly good bet that it could work. Now that's interesting, Lord Kaiforan. After the misting, you see breeding behavior. That's cool. And thank you, Wonder Pet Chronicles. I'm thinking of those. I like land shrimp. Yeah, some people call them dirt shrimp. I don't think it's a very friendly name, but I guess it kind of almost applies since they are crustaceans. Um, all right. Yeah, Wonder Pet Chronicles. You got some clue guy. They are one of the cooler species for sure. They're really pretty. Cheap isopod. One of the cheapest isopods you can get uh, is the dwarf white. Um, powder blues are also really cheap. Some of the Porcelio scabermorphs are some other really cheap isopods. So hopefully that helps. Um, there are others that are cheap as well. But that's, that's a start. Um, now let's... I want to talk about these. I'm going to pull out some others here. Get them over there. I'm going to talk about these as a cleanup crew. Because I've been experimenting with them. As a cleanup crew. Okay, so these guys, I'm going to put, oh, I'm going to put some food down right here. See if they'll go after these, these green beans. I'm not really doubting it. Well, probably, yep, they're already going for them. There you go. Um, the uh, Porcelio Levis, some people worry about Porcelio Levis in a cleanup crew and that may not be entirely unfounded because they are voracious eaters they're pretty big and they do like protein a lot so I could see that might be a problem I've been experimenting though I have a crested gecko enclosure into which I put these guys as a cleanup crew and they're doing great they're not getting eaten like the Porcelia scaber I've tried putting in with crested geckos before just get eaten but these don't seem to get eaten enough, at least. Maybe some of them are getting eaten, but they breed so fast it doesn't seem to matter. So um, I'm not saying these don't eat things, don't cause problems because of their protein craving sometimes. They may cause issues to, with uh, herps. They may end up eating reptiles and amphibians. I'm not sure. But in my experience, they haven't done it yet. And it seems to be working pretty well. And um, I'm... I would love to see some documentation on people who can demonstrate that Porcelia Levis dairy cow ate something, ate one of the reptiles. Not that I would be glad that it happened, but just to be able to get documentation on it, I think is, is valuable. So, have you had issue with population explosions in your isopod colonies to the point where it's detrimental to the health of the colony? What's a good solution to overwhelming numbers of isopods? Well, some of the colonies get pretty populated. Here's one species that can get really, really, uh, go really, really crazy. I haven't had problems with them overpopulating so much, but I know that some people just feed them off to things. Like if you have some toads or something or some reptiles that will eat isopods, you could, you could feed them off. You can split the colonies if you have room and you can sell them off. See, in most of my cases, I sell off enough isopods that I don't get overcrowded because I just, I can sell them off. It's, I've had a little bit of a wrinkle in that since I've been working on permitting because I can't sell as many. And now I'm only permitted to sell in 17 states and still working on getting approved for the others, but we'll see. The white butts, which are Porcelio scaber that are showing some really interesting coloration, seem to be doing okay. Let's see. They're in a really small container right now. So I'm going to see if I can pull that open, see if we've got any babies or anything in there yet. If I can find anything interesting to show you. Oh, well, there's one of the adults. If I can get it on screen long enough. I don't know if I can. I'll try. There's one. You can see a couple of little patches of uh, white on this one. Nothing too spectacular on that one yet. Some of the other ones look cooler. One of them just has a white antenna. Here's the one with the white butt. Right here. See, isn't that interesting? Porcelio scaber with a white butt white uropods <laughs> pretty fun so i haven't seen any babies in here yet hopefully they'll get breeding pretty soon but they seem to be doing okay no die off or anything like that so 
that's cool. And let's see. Pup 314. I've noticed whenever we have a mild hurricane up here in New England, the ice pods and millipedes are all spawning on the sides of the house and on tree trunks. Huh, interesting. And down the wormhole, hello. So infamous hip hop, think you're breeding milkbacks with orange lavis. Do you think that's possible? I saw you had issues breeding other morphs before. Well, it may be possible, it's hard to say, but I kind of think it's worth a try. I've thought about trying the same thing myself. Wally, it's Supreme Gecko, he's the, the mod, one of the mods on here, and the mod that is in the house right now, if he's still here, I think he is, um, has had some success with um, at least the initial stages of crossing um, of crossing Porcelia Levis dairy cow with orange. He's, he's getting some success there, it looks like, because he's getting wild types showing up. So it may just be um, that I've had bad luck so far, and he's had really good luck with it. It may be that he's got genetically a different group that I have. I don't know, but he's working. It's doing it. It's it's happening. So uh, it, it appears to be at least. And it, as soon as Wally has updates on it, I would be really excited to hear them. So mm, let me see. I'm gonna try to um, Jordan. You I think you said you missed this. So here is a Porcelio scabber with the white Europods or the white butt, as Wally um, termed it. So. Wanted to make sure you got a chance to uh, see that. It's kind of fun. Um, so, let's see. And Steamfoot Aquatic. Some fish love ice buds. True. Uh, have you ever tried giving them to puffers? I'm curious to hear how that goes. I've, I've often wanted to find out how many people have tried feeding them to puffers. Because it seems like they'd be perfect for puffer fish of appropriate size. So, Steamfoot Aquatics, what do you think? Have you tried that? Or what? which fish have you tried it with? And Jay's Crazy Obsessions, welcome. Captain Obvious, hello. And Alex Contreras, how are your Hoffman's egg guy doing? They're my favorite. Hoffman's egg guy, let me pull one or two out. Open over my cord here. Hopefully you can all still hear me. I think my microphone's intact. Let me see if I can find a decent size Hoffman's egg guy. Um, let's see. Uh, that's a small one. I don't think I have any full adults right now. But I might have some that are fairly big. That's a, a decent sized female right there. Let me see what I can grab here. I'm just going to grab some randomly. And try that. Oh, I think I pulled my microphone shield off. Um, here are some Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye right here and Pup 314 if ice pods want protein you can them peanut butter or soak up some legumes and mash them up for protein rich food probably could I don't know how they do on peanut butter so here's a different color morph that's showing up in the Hoffman's egg eye you see these are kind of the slaty bluey gray color and this is more of a I don't know a brown color a lot of people are getting that um, and, okay, let's see, so steam fight, I guess your, your puffers, so that makes sense, if you have puffer species that are way too large for isopods, but I've thought about doing like, uh, dwarf whites with pea puffers, but I've never done it, and yes, Jordan, I do have the giant orange Porcelio scubber, and I showed some of those at the beginning, but I might as well pop them out again for a second. Why not? I got some right here. Where are they? I haven't even taken out all the ice pods I meant to take out yet. Um, sorry, just sorting through, sorting through isopods here. I want to make sure I show as many as I can. Where are my oranges? I'm just digging around here. For a moment, there they are. I wanted to show my Florida Fast that I got from Wally, because they're doing really well. Here are 
some of my oranges, eating some green beans that I gave them earlier. They're going to town. They kind of look cool against the green, I think. Um, so yeah, they're doing pretty well. So a five inch pike cichlid that would eat the isopods, that makes sense. And here are the Florida fast that I got from Wally a while ago. And they're, they're doing well. Looks like they need some, some more leaves. Again, they're starting to eat them all up. Look at these guys. They're really fast. <laughs> and I think these are underrated as cleanup crew isopods. They're very, uh, they reproduce quickly. I think they'd be great for dart frogs. I've been thinking of putting them in with my dart frogs. Um, they're some very cool isopods too. Just super fast. I love the fact that they're fast. So. Mm. Okay. And you're welcome, Jordan. So the ice pods are eating green beans, actually. French cut green beans. They seem to get a kick out of them. Yeah, I have had bettas that would eat all kinds of bugs. When I was a kid, I had a betta and I uh, put a light outside with a bucket under it to catch bugs that would hit the light and feed him bugs and he would eat anything that I dropped in there just about. I love the orange ones too. They're fun. Yeah, yeah, Wally, I know what you mean. You, you keep it pretty damp. And I don't know if you can tell in here, this is actually pretty wet substrate. Um, and I think it's, you know, I'm trying to keep the humidity up. I think I could go a little higher. And it looks like most of the sphagnum moss I put in here, they, there's a few strands in here still, but most of it they ate. So I need to put some more in there, to make sure they got plenty of moisture. Because, yeah, I think, I think you hit the nail right on the head. They need a lot of... They need a lot of moisture. Yep. Well, I know that that was kind of here and there. We, I went in different directions and so on, but I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the cleanup crew isopods and some underrated species that people don't usually use as isopod cleanup crews and, you know, talk about the this point. What I really want to do is have people send me um, documentation of problems they've had with certain isopods in cleanup crews. Like, this is my setup, this is the species I kept in it, and this as much information as they can about the, the setup, and then say, and this is what happened, this was my problem. I think that would be really good, so that we could start documenting what's going on when there are problems, so we can start avoiding them. So Grayson, the best vegetables for isopods, there are a lot. Um, I really like sweet potatoes, carrots, um, any kind of squash or zucchini. Those are some of my big top vegetables that I like for isopods, but by no means the only ones I use. And, and thank you, we got some pretty good likes this time. Um, I'm gonna go set up to make a bioactive setup for my uh, garter snakes. My wife's gonna help me with that. We're gonna film that. And last question, pup314, do isopods ever have molting issues? Yes, they do sometimes. A lot of times you don't find out about it until it's too late because the other isopods will often eat the one that had molting problems. But I better go now. Thank you everyone. I hope to see you uh, really soon. Check out my uh, Friday video. And thanks again.